Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Tobago. I'm Davia Chambers. Today we are at Paradise Villa in Pinehurst Drive, Mount Irvin, and we invite you to come along with us as we tour this property in the next half hour. We'll also bring you up to date on all the major stories happening in Tobago. So stay with us for the details as we get started with this week's headlines. Tobago shines at the National Primary School Track and Field Championships. Young persons in Tobago face off in the first culinary competition hosted by the Department of Youth Affairs and THTI. John Dial honors its own at their seventh Senior Citizens Luncheon. And later, the Mr. Caribbean show came to Tobago, and we have all the highlights. Stay with us, all this and much more coming up when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Hi, this is Kivo, and tune in to Let's Talk Tobago. Sitting on an acre of landscaped gardens is the absolutely named Paradise Villa. It's luxuriously furnished and overlooks the Mount Irvin Golf Course, a magnificent view that stretches out into the distance. In our first story, Tobago continues to shine in the area of track and field. This year, the National Primary School Track and Field Championships, two Tobagonians copped the top place in their categories. Here's more in this story. After a 10-year wait, Tobago has once again topped the National Primary School Track and Field Championships. The 2019 Tobago contingent of 58 dethroned Port of Spain and Environs at the 57th renewal of the championships, its first such triumph since 2009. Winning the under-9 category with 26 points was Scarborough RC's Deja Reed. This was her first season participating in national track and field competitions and she did not disappoint. Deja participated in the 60 meters, 100 meters, long jump, and 4 by 100 meters relay events. She medaled in all four, which included a gold in the 60 meters. I felt very good when I win because I work hard two days a week. As a parent who also was a track athlete, I am very excited. Um, it's good to see that she's following in our footsteps. Um, I don't want to say I'm very skeptical because I want her to stay in the sport and I want her to have a longevity in the sport. So I'm not going to make this a big thing. I just want her to have fun. Lambo Anglican's Kaori Robley has the focus of a tiger. Her powerful start and explosive finish earned her the under 13 girls title with 20 points. She grabbed 200 meters and 400 meters gold in her age category. I am very elated because I have never won the top on the 13 girl Trinidad before. Kaori was trained by Soren Bishop of Mercury Athletic Club, who was thrilled with her accomplishment. We were actually trying to improve on her personal best, which was one minute, seven seconds. And based on training, uh, we estimated that we wanted her to get to one minute, two seconds. For her age group, um, she did one minute, three seconds point, I think was point five, one minute, three point five nine, somewhere there about, which was on point, um, was a massive improvement from last season. Um, Kiori has been working hard. She has been doing everything that I asked her to do. The Tobago team members also participated in training sessions with specialist coaches twice a week. The sessions were facilitated by the Sports in Education Unit of the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy. Sport Officer 1 at the division, Achelle Legal, says the Tobago team improved this year in its baton passing. What our sprint and release coach did this year, she would have more or less broken down the exchange, exchange zone within the really. So she would have more or less broken down that for them in a way that they would be able to understand at their age. So she did... Um, one of our coaching techniques I would have observed would have been to use masking tape to put them on the track so they would know exactly when to move, um, how fast to move, and the accelerations when these things. And the division is expecting even better performances in 2020. I expect nothing less than what we came with, came home with this year. I expect that we will do great in the track and field next year, and we will do good in the 3K because there are a lot of returning athletes from this year that will be ageable to be participating next year and probably the, full, the year after that. Tobago won the championships at the Hasley Crawford Stadium with 447 points.
Paradise Villa has a large living area that's tastefully decorated and looks out to the seventh hole of the golf course. Its open plan design was built to really maximize on the breeze that constantly flows through the property. Now, one community in Tobago is embarking on a mission to have the cleanest village on the island of Tobago. We have all the details in this story from Omodara Mills. Castara that's behind me here is famous for its charming and idyllic community style tourism experience. Now the community also wants to be known for its eco-friendly and sustainable practices. Residents and business owners of the Castara Tourism Development Association are working together to create a plastic-free community. They're doing this through awareness programs and making smarter choices about the products they use on a daily basis. Of course, you know, styrofoam is bad for the environment, you know, it hamburgs fish and, and marine species, also plastic. And um, glass bottle is recyclable. And um, therefore, we have, presently, we have one bin that stores all the glass bottles. We have four bins that stores plastic and aluminum cans. So that's a lot of the environment. And presently, we would be uh, bringing over from Trinidad about 10,000 uh, biodegradable food boxes and that will be distributed through the village at various uh, food vendors. The association's project has been funded by the United Nations Development Programme's Global Environmental Finance Unit. It started in May 2018 and ends in October of this year. The project also involves water testing of the community's river the distribution of marine-friendly liquid detergent and the introduction of reusable grocery bags. Hi, we have cloth bags that, are going to, that already have printed on the designs that the children did at the summer camp and every house in the village when we launch a shop will get a bag um, and then they'll be available to buy. They're also available in the guest houses. The environmentally conscious initiatives of the association have been endorsed by the Tobago House of Assembly. I really continue to be impressed by the village of Castara and in particular the Castara Tourism Development Association and the work that they are doing in that community. And I really want to commend the, those persons in Castara. Of course, the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment would have already partnered with the CTDA by endorsing their project to become a plastic-free community, the first plastic-free community in Tobago. The association plans to open a sustainable shop at the Cas Creole Bar and Restaurant later this year. Their residents will be able to buy eco-friendly biodegradable products. It's a smart entrepreneurial move. It will also help to sustain the association's future plans for keeping Castara clean, green and plastic-free. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Perfect for large groups, family vacations and getaways, Paradise Villa features seven ensuite bedrooms. Three are on the ground floor and offer views of the landscaped garden. There's also a self-contained bedroom and bathroom with kitchenette in the pool house. As we all know, art is universal. It's thought-provoking and invokes almost every emotion there is. Art is everywhere. And recently, a media launch was held for the hosting of the Tobago Schools Art Festival 2019. Here's more in this story. After more than two decades, the Tobago Arts Festival is back. This festival features a wide range of art genres, including music, dance, film, fine art, literature, and poetry. This year's theme is Winston Bailey, an ode to his creative genius. Cheryl Ann Solomon, administrating the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy, says she's happy to see the arts place on the front burner once again. The Tobago Schools Arts Festival is a vision emanating from the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy and forms part of the Tobago House of Assembly's vision to use cultural arts as a vehicle to drive, among other things, social change, alternative industry, and cultural transitioning. In keeping with the division's mandate to boost education in all sphere, Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles, who is Education um, Secretary, says such cultural experience will foster holistic development in Tobago's students. Arts in general, 
and arts in education more particularly must be seen as an ideal avenue to nurture and develop the skills and talents of each child and connect them with their culture and with the wider world. Through this festival, students will showcase their talent through various forms. It will have other benefits. For the boys and girls, our children, the Arts Festival provides a perfect opportunity to build their self-confidence, social and emotional skills, strong language competencies, critical thinking, and indeed, their creativity and imagination. The arts can also be a way out of poverty. Arts provide tremendous opportunities for lucrative careers, as was demonstrated by the Mighty Shadow and other artists, local, regional, and international. The festival will be held later on this month at various schools across Tobago. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. The Eat Local Exhibition and Food Fair is just one of many activities to raise awareness about the local foods that people can access in Tobago. Coming up after the break, we tell you more about this event and its importance. Stay with us. Keep watching! Let's Talk Tobago! <laughs> For staying with us. You are watching Let's Talk Tobago and we are at Paradise Villa. A polished teak staircase leads to three other ensuite bedrooms, all of which open onto a veranda. It's a stunning vantage point that you will enjoy every day of your stay right here. Tobago continues to push for greater food security, and one way of realizing that goal is to promote the consumption of locally grown and processed foods through the Eat Local campaign. We have highlights of the event and insight into what patrons had to say about their experience. Listen up. Local food lovers and those with an inquisitive palate turned out in their numbers for the second annual Eat Local exhibition and food fair. They sampled and even purchased various products made out of locally grown fruit, vegetables, and root crops. The one-day event was the climax of the Eat Local campaign, an initiative spearheaded by the Division of Food Production, Forestry, and Fisheries. This year's campaign took place under the theme, Celebrate Our Local Foods, Produce, Process, Promote. We in the Tobago House Assembly, especially in the Division of Food Production, Forestry and Fisheries, have this Eat Local where we highlight the nutritionist value of our local food. What we have here right in Tobago that we have grown that, is, that can sustain us and our livelihood and our way of life. Some patrons enjoyed live demonstrations of cassava flatbread making farine making, as well as the traditional method of making cocoa balls, while others picked up a few seedlings for their home gardens. Many people are delighted that the TH is promoting the consumption of more indigenous foods and products. I've seen punches from all kinds of fruits and vegetables that I never thought could have been made, that are made, and when I tasted them, they, they were excellent. They can rock with any of the international punches. I've seen a lot of things that I haven't seen in years and you know it's heartening to see that people continue to make these products and that it's out there for young people in the schools to see that you know this, this can be produced from these products. It's about building Tobago and its brand and also giving to the public, giving back to the public and showcasing what Tobago has to offer. You're, you're seeing our local entrepreneurs, our local farmers and you're able to see firsthand what it is they do. I also appreciate the fact that there are demonstrations of things that are indigenous to Tobago. For example, like the cocoa, how you boil the cocoa and the making of the cassava bread. That one interests me a lot. During the exhibition, prizes were distributed for the secondary school's Iron Chef competition. Bishop's High School was awarded Top Iron Chef, while Signal Hill Secondary School took the prize for Best to Drink. The THA's interdivision cooking competition was another highlight of the day. The top award went to Sea Chefs, which comprised members of the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard. It's a very good feeling to be a part of the competition, especially where Coast Guard um, entered the competition. That's for a form of um, relaxation. Um, we, we have a very hectic schedule, and I find we have limited times when, when the men 
could um, actually be involved in these kind of activities and, and, and kind of foster camaraderie and that kind of thing. So this was a great opportunity for us and we're thankful for the, for the division for inviting us and um, we had a great time. The Eat Local exhibition and food fair was held at the Gardenside Car Park in Scarborough. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. At Paradise Villa, you will find a well-equipped kitchen with granite countertops and cypress wood cabinetry. All kitchen appliances are stainless steel. Or if you're in the mood for some barbecue, you can fire up the gas grill and have a lime outdoors. So how much do you know about glaucoma? It's a serious condition that can affect your eyes. Omodara Mills visited the eye clinic at the Scarborough General Hospital and spoke with a medical practitioner about this disease. One third of the visually impaired population in the country has glaucoma. That's according to a 2013 to 2014 study conducted by the National Eye Institute of Trinidad and Tobago. The disease affects the optic nerve by causing a buildup of fluid pressure in the front of the eye. It's painless and symptom-free, and if left unchecked via regular eye screenings, can lead to blindness. That's why the ophthalmology department of the Scarborough General Hospital carries out thorough eye screenings and tests. Routinely, in the clinic, uh, persons who we have as, who we term glaucoma suspect, we usually have them scanned. So they have scanning of the, the optic nerve, and this is done with an instrument, digitally done, and give you an, um, an objective idea of the size of the nerve. And also, um, the visual field is also done digitally. But like I say, it's nothing really additional. This is all part of the workup for somebody who we have as a glaucoma suspect. Glaucoma is common in populations of African, Indian, or Asian descent. The probability of developing this eye disease increases after age 40. Those who have had eye trauma, patients with chronic lifestyle diseases such as hypertension and diabetes, and in people with a family history of this condition. Now, if detected in the early stage, glaucoma is treatable. Glaucoma is usually successfully treated with drops medically. Okay, most of the population, we put them on drops and uh, it keeps the pressure and, and probably holds progression because it's a lifelong disease, we can't cure it. It probably holds the progression for, for until. Okay, for those that develop resistance or, or not being successful with drops alone, there are other procedures, laser or their surgery. Dr. Bristol Smith says you can take some precautions to maintain good eye health. We advise everybody to be screened. Okay, that is one of the proactive ways of addressing glaucoma in our population. Also, because you know, it there's a small percentage that might have it secondary to trauma. We advise persons to wear protective goggles if you know in these high risk occupations or sports. Persons with chronic diseases to make sure that they take their medications on time and that whatever conditions they have are well controlled. Everyone is encouraged to have their eyes tested and screened annually. You can do the tests privately or visit a health center near you. If any problems are discovered, you will then be referred to the TRHA's Scarborough General Hospital for further tests and treatment. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Unwind and enjoy the large rectangular pool complete with a spacious deck. It's the ideal place to relax with a cocktail and good friends, lounge with your favorite book, or take a refreshing swim to beat the heat. A quote from Ralph Emerson states, you cannot do a kindness too soon, for you never know how soon it will be too late. But that's not the case for the folks of the tranquil village of John Dial. For yet another year, the senior citizens were treated to an annual luncheon. The gesture is a kind way of reminding the seniors how important they still are to our society. Here's more in this story. The contributions of our senior citizens should never go unnoticed. They are pillars of our society, and advocates of growth and development. It's why the village of Jondal continues to recognize and honor its senior citizens with a day of food, friendship, and laughter. This is the seventh year they have hosted this annual luncheon. Secretary in the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, Mrs. Marcelin Melvin Jack says, she considers herself a senior. She believes the next generation can learn from older folks about having a good attitude and good values, just like how they grew up. We should not be afraid to speak up and to speak out. And I want to encourage you this morning, seniors, and I consider myself a senior because I'm over 60. We need 
to speak the word to the young folks. And that word starts with us. How do we present ourselves to them? The luncheon provides an opportunity for seniors to socialize and to impact valuable lessons to the youth. Don't try to compete with young people. Teach them the way. Teach them what is right. Teach them what is godliness. Teach them the fear of God. Take the word of God, let the word of God, which is the only truth that man has, the absolute truth, the absolute truth, the amen, the yes and the amen of all life is the word of God. It's not my opinion. And anybody who wants to doubt that. The curtains came down with the presentation of hampers to the eldest male and female at the luncheon, age 86 and 96 respectively. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. The Mr. Caribbean show came to Tobago and it was certainly one for the books. We've got the highlights when we return. Don't go anywhere. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Yo, 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 Tobago, what's up? This is yours truly positive from beautiful Tobago and you're locked on to Let's Talk Tobago. Boom, 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 boom. Bless. If you prefer more adventure than the pool, Paradise Villa is a short commute away from the Mount Irvin Beach, which is open to swimmers, snorkelers, and surfers alike. So the third edition of the Mr. Caribbean competition was held in the beautiful island of Tobago. The show was entertaining and competitive as men from across the Caribbean displayed their talent, intelligence and charisma as they vied to be named Mr. Caribbean 2019. Here's more. He represented his country, the British Virgin Islands, with pride, charisma and finesse. He's Johansi Smith, Mr. Caribbean 2019. Johanse edged out seven other competitors to win the crown and $8,000. Johanse was also named as the contestant with the best formal wear. <laughs> Giving his all in each segment was Trinidad's Jonathan Samuel, who finished as runner-up. He also cupped the special prizes of best magnificent wear and best swimwear. My two eyes have to follow. Both Mr. Barbados and Mr. Dominica tied for the third position. Mr. Dominica, Jovan Batiste, won most photogenic, while Mr. Barbados, Kofi Jilks, had the best talent. He gave an enthralling performance on the saxophone to Tony Braxton's Unbreak My Heart. Tobago's Andal McIntosh was named Mr. Personality and Antigua and Barbuda's Timoy Titus won the best interview. This was the first time the Mr. Caribbean show was held in Tobago. The event was supported by the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation. From the moment you arrive at Paradise Villa, your vacation has officially begun. The only thing you'll have to worry about is your adventure in Tobago and making great vacation memories during your stay. Now, maple dancing in Tobago is one of those traditions that was inherited from the island's past. And the Maple Festival is a way of preserving that cultural heritage. In our final story, we take you to the Maple Festival 2019. <laughs> In brightly colored creative costumes, a total of nine primary schools and 15 community groups showed off their choreographed dance moves to popular music as they participated in the recent Maypole Festival. Participants danced around a pole displaying the intricate plaiting techniques of Maypole dancing. Techniques that they learned in training sessions conducted by tutors from the Performing Arts Training Program. The children were very receptive to the movements. Uh, it wasn't something that was too difficult and we had music that we could relate to, soca, so that was the easier part for me and for also them. The plotting was easier for them. The dancing was harder than the plotting for them. Yeah. So basic things like spider web, I think we learned that in one session. So I showed them a video at first and then we just practice it reverse it, practice it, reverse it, and that was fine. The Maypole Festival is a significant cultural tradition that exposes the participants to its history. 
It will play a key role for those students preparing for theatre arts examinations. I think it's very, very beneficial to the young children or young generation that we have to understand the history of the maypole, understand why we do it. As it pertains to the Amerindians, the plotting of the pole that comes from the Sebuka festival, which is a fertility festival and as you all know, May month is considered the month of spring when everything's going to grow back and that, and that is one of the significance of it. But more so now as a cultural art form, it is also on the CSEC syllabus for theatre arts and actually this year is one of the years that they will be, um, that is one of the, the art form that they must study for the exam for next year. The Maypole Festival in Tobago was on a three-year hiatus and its reintroduction is a welcome addition to the island's tourism product. From the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, I'm Juliet James reporting for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's now time to have your say. It's the segment of our program where we hear from you, the viewers. Let's take a look at who had their say this week with Marlon Gutsleben. No one's asking question. What's the question? Um, the question. Things. Why are you spelling things? That's a quick question. Nothing. Ah! Mm -hmm. Let's not hold on. I've written for you money for the question now. It's that time again. It's have your say time again. And the question we're asking today is, do you think that the time should be extended for the Venezuelan refugees for the registration process? This is what you said. Yes, I think the registration process should be extended. Yes, they should extend the time. Yes, I feel it should extend it. Because in this short space of time, they would not help everybody. And this month is good for them. And let the people them stop harassing them. Because if we're in a different country and we want help, we will need help too. Yeah, if my should get them a lot of time because they know they're going to a little phrase now, boy. We have to help them, man. We have to help somebody. I do believe that we should extend the time because of the situation that's going on. When, when Amnesty in America for illegal aliens is over a month years ago, so why give them only two weeks? It's a fair time, you know, to be honest, you know, because remember, if I try to break the rules again, they will continue asking for more time. We give them from, it's not something to talk yesterday. I want to thank you for all you were doing for the Venezuelans in Trinidad and Tobago too. Why are you spelling things? That's a quick question, nothing else. Let's not hold on. I've written for you money for the question now. We've come to the end of yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now for more information on Paradise Villa you can contact 760-6209. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Chief Secretary's Charity Golf Tournament prize-giving ceremony. Do enjoy.